This video is brought to you by Skillshare. So how can we make our mobile videography look much more cinematic? What tips and tools will help improve the look of your footage and make your videos stand out? Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know. It's coming up. Hey everyone, Steve here from Learn Online Video. And today we're talking all about how we can make our smartphone footage look much more cinematic. Everybody's got a smartphone these days. So how can we make our footage look different to all the other footage that's being shot? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be giving you tips for making your footage look much more film-like and professional. We're talking camera settings, movement, accessories, framing, composition, and much, much more. So let's jump straight in and talk about the best camera settings for mobile videography. Okay, so right here I have the iPhone 11. This isn't the newest phone, but it's certainly not the oldest. Regardless of what phone you're using, open up your phone's camera settings and see what it's capable of. This phone here, for example, has the option to shoot in 4K 60 frames per second. I'm going to choose this option because it will produce nice, crisp, high resolution footage and shooting in 60 frames per second will also give me the option to slow my footage down in the edit. Now, if I know I'm not gonna be slowing my footage down, then I would choose 4K 24 frames per second, but being able to slow your footage down will also help you to smooth it out and take away any unwanted shake when shooting. So this comes in really really useful. If your phone doesn't have a 4K option, then choose the next best thing. 1080, 60 frames per second, for example. And if you don't have that, then 1080, 24 or 30 frames per second will do just fine. Image stabilization. Put simply, the better your phone's image stabilization, the smoother your footage will look. Take the iPhone 11 for example, the image stabilization on this phone is actually really good which makes shooting handheld much, much easier. But if your phone's image stabilization isn't great, you might need to invest in something to help smooth it out, like a gimbal for example, apps. So should you or shouldn't you use your phone's native camera app to shoot video? This is a question that I get asked a lot. And my answer is, well, it depends on what you're shooting and how much control you would like over your camera settings. Now, there are definite pros and cons to both. So let's start with the pros of shooting video with your phone's native camera app. And the biggest one of all is that, well, it's your phone's native camera app. So it's free and it comes with your phone. But the second one, and this is a big one for me, probably the biggest one, especially using the iPhone 11 with its image stabilization, is that when you use your phone's native camera app, you get great image stabilization. Quite often, when you use a third-party app, you can lose a lot of that image stabilization. Now, let's talk about third-party apps. Now, there are two front runners as far as I'm concerned, Filmic Pro and the Moment app, but both of these cost money, anywhere between five and $20. And like I said, quite often you can lose a lot of your phone's image stabilization when shooting via these apps, but you do get a lot of control over your phone's camera settings, and this can come in incredibly useful. You basically get full manual control over things like shutter speed, ISO, white balance. Some even allow you to shoot in a flat picture profile, which can come in incredibly useful when it comes to color grading. Lenses. The iPhone 11 has two lenses, the standard and the wide. The pro version has an additional telephoto lens. How many lenses your phone has? I've got no idea. I honestly can't keep up. Samsung just released one with about 20 lenses. But what I will say is always make the most of what you have. If all you have is the standard lens, then just use that. Don't use not having a wide angle lens or a telephoto lens as an excuse not to go out and shoot. And in all honesty, I find the less that you have, the more it forces you to be creative. So always look at the positives and make the most of what you have. Now I use a good mix of my standard and wide angle lens when shooting on my smartphone, but I find shooting with my wide angle lens definitely gives me the most cinematic look. Here's a shot using the standard lens and here's the same shot using the wide angle lens. You're able to see so much more and when you add cinematic bars and a color grade, the footage looks a lot less like it was shot on a smartphone and much more like something that you would see in the cinema. I will put a link to a free LUT and cinematic bars overlay in the description below. Also, if your phone doesn't have a wide angle lens, you can buy one that just clips onto your phone and replicates a very similar look. Again, I will link some below. Camera movement. 
camera movement plays a huge role in making our footage look much more cinematic and professional. So how can we get nice smooth shots, especially when we're first starting out? Well, as mentioned, your phone's image stabilization will really help with this if you have any. If you don't, then try using three points of contact on your phone. Two hands, one, two points of contact, with the third point of contact being your elbows, just digging in to your torso. Now this isn't the most practical way to shoot, but it will definitely help take away any of that unwanted shake. And if you're still not happy with how smooth your footage is looking, then it might be time to invest in a gimbal. Gimbal is going to quickly and easily give you nice smooth footage without any of that horrible shake you might get when shooting handheld. Prices start from around $79 or 55 British pounds. And they all do different things. They have different modes, different features. Some have two axis, some have three, some lock, some wobble, some extend. I won't go too deep into all the different features of all these different gimbals because that's a video in itself, but I will leave links to some that I recommend in the description below. More tools for video. So what other accessories are out there to make our footage look much more professional? Well, in front of me here, I've got a few. Let's start with the Gorillapod or Tripod. This will come in really useful if you're looking to capture a static shot, perfect for a time-lapse, for example. Also, a great tool if you're a vlogger or somebody that needs to film themselves because it allows you to get much better grip on your phone and put it further away for a much wider angle. All very, very useful. A light stand. If you watched last week's episode, you would have seen me use the gimbal light stand combo to achieve super cinematic Hollywood style camera moves, but these could have also been achieved using a monopod or boom pole. It really doesn't matter. Any telescopic extension pole will do. Just make sure that whatever you use has the ability to attach a gimbal like this quarter inch thread. This setup will take your footage to a whole new level and seriously increase the production value of your films and videos. Power pack. I highly recommend using one of these external battery packs. You can pick these up pretty cheap online and they will easily give your phone another charge. Great if you're out in the middle of nowhere shooting with no power supply and they can also be used to charge other batteries, camera batteries, your gimbal. So incredibly useful if not essential. Also pro tip if you're ever shooting video on your phone be sure to put your phone in airplane mode. This will massively save your battery. Framing and composition. I've said it before and I'll say it again, framing and composition is one of the best free ways to improve the look of your films and videos. You don't need any fancy camera accessories for this, just think before you shoot. Can you improve the composition of your shot? Maybe choose a lower angle, maybe choose a higher angle, or add something to the foreground to create more depth. I've got plenty of videos dedicated to framing and composition, leading lines and the rule of thirds linked below. Audio. Often overlooked when it comes to mobile videography, audio, but really, really important if you're looking to create engaging videos that your audience will enjoy. Again, the iPhone 11 has a pretty good inbuilt microphone, especially if you're indoors where there's no wind. If you're looking to add an additional microphone to your phone, then I recommend keeping it small and what you choose will depend on what you're shooting. A small shotgun mic like this one would be great for general sounds and a dead cat would help reduce wind noise or a wireless microphone like this one here would work great for interviews or talking head style videos like this one here. All gear mentioned in this video, by the way, will be linked in the description below. Now, before we jump into editing techniques to help make our videos stand out, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare, and how we can use Skillshare to help improve the look of our films and videos. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives. It offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, freelancing, and much, much more. Skillshare has literally of thousands of classes to help you grow as a creative. For example, if you're into mobile filmmaking, which I assume you are if you've made it this far into the video, then storytelling in film using cinematography to convey emotion by Joe Simon is an absolute must. I first came across Joe back in my wedding filmmaking days about 10 years ago, so I was thrilled to find him on Skillshare sharing his most up-to-date knowledge on cinematography. Put simply, Skillshare helps you grow as a creative. Gain those extra skills needed to turn your hobby into a career, land the clients you've always wanted to work with, make more money and be more creative 
Whatever your goal, when it comes to creativity, Skillshare can help you get there. With classes to fit your schedule and skill level for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, you can binge knowledge to your heart's content. And the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So you've got nothing to lose. Use the link, take a class, soak up some knowledge and get creative. Sound design. There are two parts of your timeline when it comes to editing. This top section, this is where all of your footage goes, and this bottom section, this is where all your audio goes. And it is this section that is often overlooked and underutilized. This timeline shows a very basic sequence using footage and audio direct from the phone. Let's take a look. Now, as you heard, the audio in that sequence was terrible. It was all shot using the phone's internal microphone on a windy day and it sounded horrendous. Now let's scrap all of that audio and replace it with something that sounds a lot more creative and professional. Now, the only difference between those two sequences was sound design and music. Spent about 10 minutes looking for some sounds that would best match the footage. Car passing, a whoosh sound effects, ambient sounds, added them all to the timeline and this is the result. Much, much better. It makes a huge difference to your edits. I will do an entire video all about sound design soon. Color grading. This is one of the best ways to make your footage stand out compared to all the other footage that's being shot on smartphones. Stylize your footage, color grade, make it pop, dark, moody, bright, whatever best suits the look, style, and feel that you're going for. All of the footage that you can see here has been color graded using my new cinematic LUT pack, but use whatever LUTs you like, experiment, and get creative. So look, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, do let me know by giving it the old thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this, learn more about video production, then you can do that by watching one of my other videos just over there. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.